I'm blowing my mind. <laughs> this is crazy. Because, yeah, you think like, oh, yeah, the quarterback gets all the girls. The point guard gets all the girls. What came first? Chicken the egg. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. The coach thinking he's hot. Like, yeah. Man, I'd kiss that boy. Yeah. Quarterback. <laughs> you got a bunch of kids showing up to first year football practice like eyeliner on. <laughs> <laughs> They're wearing mesh shirts. Like, coach, put me, all, under, put me under center. It all turns into Tracy Morgan in uh, the longest yard. <laughs> you wear a 3XL well. It's very nice of you to say. <laughs> it's my only option. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Yeah. You know what you are? You're like, you're like, if you took a box yeah. and you drag the corner up so everything gets bigger, you know, you're not wide, you're not a freak too tall. Uh-huh. You're just, everything is just big, but yeah. it... I have human force perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I'm both very close and far away at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It's it's I not do, dude, like I've been wearing a lot of just like black sweatshirts. That's so always I the way. Just kind of look like my head's been implanted. <laughs> a void. We uh, anytime we got on stage to do a live podcast. Yeah. Lo and behold, both time both of us would walk out, you know, of the hotel room or meet at the elevator or whatever. All in black every time. Course, like, yeah. That's the rule, I man. Confident in black, man. I'm like, yeah. I want to wear shorts, but then people were like, "Oh, he's the shorts guy," and I was like, "I no more shorts." Like, yeah, shorts that's a whole thing I in your world, that right? For a, while, yeah. for a while, where it was a lot of shorts. And it was like that. a very petty rebellion. <laughs> well, because women would wear whatever they wanted, and I was always envious of that. Cause yeah, we had to wear like a hoodie in like jeans. Yeah, and right. And I was like, I, want, I look better in shorts because <laughs> uh, I don't have that just block man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you get a little bit of yeah. There's some delineation. I one time Akash. Uh, performed at one of our shows and, mm-hmm. and he came right from something and was in shorts and he was like I'm so sorry dude yeah. like I, I don't want you to think I was taking this unprofessional I was like I would not ever have even known it was a thing Unless now I very me. much do I was this was years ago but I understand yeah. that people are like whoa shorts I'm like you're about to get on stage and talk about, you know, your toad dick. But right. wait, but you're oh, no shorts. God, no shorts. Big showing the ankle. Yeah. Yeah. It's Crazy. very Victorian in that way. But, yeah, it was a big thing back in the day because, like, if you show up in shorts, all the old heads would be like, this guy doesn't give a shit. Right. It's, it's, it's a disrespect. Yeah, but it's like Sinatra's dead. Let's live a little. Bit, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like we all used to go to baseball games with a fucking suit and tie and a hat. Yeah, exactly. and shit. Don't do that anymore. Yeah, fucking I'm not relax. To the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm doing yeah. your open mic. <laughs> um, the special. It's nice to see you guys. Thank yeah, you. Dude, a yeah. pleasure dude, to see you. Yeah, you you, you, you see are you. one of the gems, babe. Thanks, you, were, man. you were really one of them. The you know what I really all. love? Uh, the special is out. Toad's morale. Yeah. On uh, on YouTube, it's just it sounds different. I think we. Uh, I shouldn't say we because I'm not really in the comedy world, but I think the comedy world kind of got a little one dimensional for a little while there. Yeah. It was like every for a couple of years, it was like every joke, everything opened with a COVID joke uh-huh. and everything went to Trump. And yeah. and even the cadence and the style and some of these things I was and maybe it's just because there's a lot more comedy yeah. and you start to just watch more specials and you're like, boy, a lot of these people are similar, whatever it may be. The the whole thing sounds different, you Thanks, know. Man. You're kind of maniacal. Yeah. You're uh, you seem in yeah. extreme. <laughs> <laughs> up there. You seem yeah. extremely <laughs> comfortable on stage, where it's like, you know, I'll tell you what to laugh at and what not to laugh at, and mm-hmm. all that shit. Where I think I'm sure you get that from zillions of repetitions, but it's also just the style of like, it. It's this is not you know we're not in Kansas anymore. I feel no. like that that special is a very you're like, whoa, what are we talking about now? What Thank did he just you. say? And, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, my whole curse is that I like funny comedy, <laughs> which is not, like, important anymore, you know? It's a good point. Yeah. It's a good point. I watch a lot of comedy, and I'm like, where's the jokes? Yeah. yeah. And, like, I definitely wanted to do, I wanted to, like, kind of, I told my friends, I was like, I'm going to try and do a Skangster the Memory style just jokes. Like, David tells Skangster the Memory, is, that's the best comedy album ever, in my opinion. Not that I'm at all close to it, but I was like, I just want jokes. I want it to be a party record. I want people. Sure. I don't want them to think. God forbid they're yeah. thinking. Yeah, yeah. If you want your comedy to make people think, <laughs> you should hang yourself. You know, when they, when they, when they you say, disappear you forever. guys are the modern day philosophers. Yeah, and what all the that fuck sh- does that mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. For sure Dude, not. if I ever say <laughs> that, please just take a brick. <laughs> <laughs> Left temple, right temple. <laughs> just take make me sure out, the bro. job Dude. is done. Yeah. You there guys can is. have my hide, lay me down on the. <laughs> do you think. What do you think it is about like comedy that makes people eventually think that i feel like that is the end game a lot for older comedians where yeah. it is like i am the wise one yeah they start taking being a clown very seriously <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, i don't know dude literally is, clowns do, do you, you circus, think of it like, as like do you think almost like like how a regular person thinks about their dad like god i hope i don't end up like that one day like are you like 
is it an active thing that you avoid? Like, I don't want, like, or, or not, not avoid, but worry that might come unbeknownst to you? I don't think it's just going to strike in the night. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to get a tick bite, and all of a sudden I'm wearing sunglasses on stage. <laughs> yeah, no, dude. I just think that um, a lot of people start taking it really seriously, and they forget, like, the stuff that they loved about comedy, which is just making people laugh. Yeah. And then they have this whole warrior poet ethos. Yeah. And it's like... I have a theory, too. I think with this little golden era of, of comedy, uh, at least business yeah you know i don't know about the the content per se but the amount of money people are making and the amount of fame they are getting and the followers they garner and a lot of them i'm just sure people have haters but a lot of them are just like dick riders and like that's so brilliant that's so funny that's so yeah. smart and you start to eat your own the emperor yeah, has believe no it. clothes yeah yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. the when, every time somebody says anything it's like yo that was deep and oh, it's like oh shit he's spitting up there. <laughs> yeah I, it's like it was about- it, you know you go if you go one half step further than the average thought, average mind. People mm-hmm. are like, whoa, yeah. you know? I, I was at a show once. It's probably the comedian we're all thinking of right now. <laughs> um, I'm not thinking of any comedians. <laughs> no, everyone you're thinking about is my friend. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> and... and <laughs> <laughs> We're all avoiding saying Voldemort's name, <laughs> but he was like, like, like objectively speaking, he was putting on a bad show. He was hammered, drunk, and and I'm sure he would tell you he was like, I was fucked up. And that show sucked. Yeah, and there were guys in front of me being like. Tell him, Dave. Yeah, and then, like it was like we. Were, I was with some friends, and we were like, he's just shit faced, stu- like mm-hmm. mumbling, yeah. mm-hmm. and he still had so many people that were like, this is unbelievable, and like, yeah. he literally couldn't speak. He mm-hmm. was hammered, drunk, and again, like I, I have no problem with that. Like whatever, you fuck, you got fucked up, you missed the show. I like, have a couple, yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> but it was these like, idiots don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee, if you'd ask Dave, he'd be like, yeah, that was terrible. Right. But like the amount of people in the room that were still like, this is. We're listening to a god speak was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, I mean, it, it, it be. It, I think I've always said for a while that uh, it's still sports is like king. Of course. And then right beneath that is comedy, and like who your favorite comic is is kind of like who your favorite athlete is. And yeah, and it and, also like really, uh, if you tell someone, do you like a comic? It's like telling someone you like it's your favorite band. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of yeah. who you Similar, are wrapped right. up in your personality. To someone, yeah, yeah, yeah and so. it's like it's not only who you like, it's who don't you like. Right, you know, are yeah. you with this clique or that clique? For sure. And if you don't like them, and somebody tells you, you're like fuck that, you know, it's it's a very competitive thing almost, even for the fans. Um, that all of a sudden it becomes who's smartest, who's making the most, who all the. You know all the stuff that has nothing to do with being funny. Com- yes, with jokes, yeah, which right. is funny. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but it sucks that like, I mean, obviously, you want to be successful, you want to be rich, you want to be, you know. I, was- you, I mean, you can be successful without being rich. I think you want to be like satisfied with the work you're putting out. Mm-hmm. I think that's very important. Sure, but then, but if also, you, you want to be if, rich, right? Well, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not opposed to a big bag of money. You know, <laughs> that's. Uh, but like, oh, you can certainly be successful without being rich, yeah. Well, I think that you, yeah, you can't be monetarily successful, right. I guess. But like, I think just a lot of people forget that like the point of the whole thing is to put out something that people can not have to think about their lives for ten minutes, twenty minutes, an mm-hmm. hour. Like when I'm on stage live, it's like I want them never to be like, "Damn, we got a babysitter for that." Yeah, like I want everyone right. to be like, "That was worth yeah, the funny. time and like." energy and effort that i put into it yeah i think that that's like kind of forgotten about when you get to well the, when you get to arenas you know and you've got yeah. like flaming t-shirt cannons or whatever. <laughs> right 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 yeah. I, I, what i can say for with you know obviously all of this is up to your own opinion but it, it feels like every word is like was kind of crafted in this special like there's Thanks, no man. lost like uh, that part sucked or like whatever like that was just a long setup it was just like boom, boom. No, no, long throughout. setup's terrible. No, yeah, it should no. be a joke every 15 yeah. to 20 seconds. You right, know? right. Yeah, like you want them to throw up. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I want. Like, yeah, that's, it is that's a little the bit right of, thing. Yeah. If you can move them yeah. to vomit, you've done a really good job. Because it is a job. It's not an art. People, Comics think it's an art form. It's a craft. Mm-hmm. You're only allowed to get one response. In art, you can make people whimsical or sentimental or sad or happy. They have to laugh yeah, or you blew it. it. Yeah. Right. Make them laugh. Right. Right. You're not that cool. Yeah, yeah. This isn't. But there's nothing cool about stand-up. I, I, I got to no, stand-up. It was for see, drifters. That, that's where you. That's where you get in. Like that's where I think this whole discussion comes from. Is like, it is cool. It is cool. Like when I when I see a comedian kill, 
again, like it to me, it's the same thing as watching like somebody dunk or like you know hit a fucking home run. Where I'm like, I wish I could do that. Yeah. So that inherently is like cool. Well, that's the thing is a lot of people think they could do that. Yeah. yeah. People don't think that yeah. they can tomahawk 360 from the free throw line. Right. <laughs> but they are like. Oh, I'm like funny at the office. Yeah. This yeah. guy's not doing shit that I couldn't do. <laughs> yep. If I didn't have this bag over here weighing me down <laughs> and the fucking kids at home, God damn, why are we even fucking here? <laughs> They're having that it's, war it's, in their uh... mind the whole time you're on stage being like, my penis stinks. <laughs> 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 it, it's it's golf, sex, and comedy. Three things that people think they yeah. can do. Mm-hmm. And probably you're not good at it. No. Yeah, Definitely I mean, bad I think at golf. I'm more creative you stink at, at sex. sex. You're create, more creative at I sex? I try and do a good job in there. <laughs> I really <laughs> well, want the club to have me back, you know? <laughs> <laughs> can we sell a lot of drinks? How'd we do out there? <laughs> Because <laughs> I have a very strict contract, I'm only w- allowed to work one club. One club <laughs> until no. she, that club finds my body. <laughs> it's a small club. You don't want an arena. Oh, it's you a want real it just tight a tight, club. like yeah. fifty people max. Uh-huh. That's it. <laughs> yeah, on college night, it gets messy in there. <laughs> we give away a lot of tickets. <laughs> But I sell a lot of shirts People barking for her. You know, <laughs> barking yeah. for that club. Man, that's good. That's funny shit. Yeah, man. See, um, this is this is fun. This We're is having funny. a good time. We're not talking about like... This is also another realm, very similar, yeah. where, you know, all of a sudden... I, 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 I think we've done a good job here. No, I'll say we did. I don't, I don't even think... I, I think we did a good job here of really staying in our lane. Yeah. A couple times here and there when, like society was at like a fever pitch and it was almost like if you're not talking about this topic you're just burying your head in the sand Mm -hmm. we would touch upon it but probably in a ignorant and stupid funny way yeah i know how baby yeah Yeah. that's what we do best (laughs) well you guys are excellent broadcasters too you know what i mean it helps that you're likable dudes who you want to have a beer with but also like you guys are really good at your jobs yeah i mean if you talk really nice talk enough yeah i'm not lying Uh, but you know, I don't know about I, these characters, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're they're the they're gonna shoot, shoot past us from yeah. Uh, but you know, once people start to use your platform, mm-hmm. like, fuck you. Yeah, I don't like that. First phrase. of all, I don't even like the word platform, and yeah. second of all, I'm gonna use it how I want to use it. You know? you know, I have these meetings with my agents, and they say the word landscape four times, and I'm like, what are we? Are we gardeners? Ooh. What are we talking about? <laughs> that, that, one, they, they, that was a one. I don't even know that one. Yeah. What are they saying about like the, the current landscape? Yeah, you yeah. know, how how is how are we gonna get the ball onto the green? <laughs> it's like I play frisbee golf in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no landscape. That was another there. thing I noticed that you you, you were describing. Describing who it was, just a you know a character, or maybe yourself. Oh, it was your father. Yeah, and you know you're like he's combing his ponytail mm-hmm. while he thinks about his disc golf, yeah. and and you and you painted the picture so well. Thanks, man. <laughs> what was it? Your mom was giving birth in a fucking yeah. <laughs> abandoned yeah. barn. In the yeah. barn. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the whole thing is just like, oh wow, that's what I mean. You know, it's not just like. Uh, it's just there's it was more intricate where it's like I there was a whole, I, I'm envisioning a woman giving birth in a barn right now to a fifteen a baby that's been in in womb for fifteen months yeah. you know you paint that picture very very well, well. you're it's, an, like you're a gen, like I love you you're my favorite thanks man. and you're a I genuine... believe the kids call this glazing yeah. I think we're glazing yeah but you know Sam. just being sincerely nice to nice. people yeah. like, oh <laughs> this guy's glazing his ass yeah. 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 <laughs> That's how toxic masculinity works. <laughs> it's like, oh, you said a nice thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you're you're so gracious. You're so fucking funny, and you're so talented. And like, you're talking about painting a picture. Like, it, I feel like almost we're, t- we're talking about how good you are at that. And then like, oh well, yeah, obviously you are. You wrote fucking Running the Light, which is yeah, an insanely good book. Thanks, man. Mm-hmm. And it led to one of my more awkward interactions with an aunt. Oh yeah, we were, we were just talking about books over the summer, and Cormac McCarthy came up, and I remember Cormac McCarthy's mentioned in one of your poll quotes. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, you gotta read Sam Talent running the light." And my aunt's like very buttoned up and all this shit. Yeah, and she's like, "It's really great writing. 
a little crude for me. Yeah. And I was like, I hadn't put together. I was like, oh, yeah, this whole thing is incredibly mm-hmm. fucking crude. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and that guy is just a, you know, raging Bulgarian. He's an id. Yeah. He's just trying to feel something. So he's mm-hmm. not alone with his thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and also I was smart in that book. I put some fist fights in there. I put some three ways in. Because, <laughs> like, I didn't think, you know, people who read, uh, you know, Anne Pruel were going to pick up my book. Right. And, you know, I wanted no, to right. sell it's, it to dudes who again, love Again, stay in your lane a little yeah. bit. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. If you like Shine Down, this is the book for you. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you wrote that book, yeah, how much of the comedy in it were you like, "Fuck, I wish this was mine." On, I wish I used this on stage, or did it, did any of you did you use any of it? On stage? When he has the big break, to, like, he loses his mind at a point in the book, mm-hmm. and he's like actually being sincere up there and like talking about his actual life instead of doing crowd work with blind people or whatever. <laughs> uh, that stuff, some of that stuff was in my act way back in the day. Back in the day, okay. but a lot of I, that stuff, I was reading a thing like, "God, this is so funny." Thanks, mm-hmm. man. And I was hoping. Yeah. It was used. Well, the trick with that, that was the part I was most scared of, was writing the stand-up for the book. Because it's really hard to be funny in the written word. And I knew comics were going to read this book. And that guy had to be like this road dog who's kind of hacky, but also very good at stand-up from yeah. doing it for 30 years. Mm-hmm. So trying to make it sound like real in that way, I was like, comics are going to read this and think he's like trying too hard or he isn't hacky enough. And I'm really happy that people thought it was accurate to him you yeah know? it was but i mean dude i've seen some people do some like versions of those bits like dudes at meat raffles you know in like s- severe north dakota severe <laughs> oh yeah like we used to do like oil mining town or like when they would have a boom town and they'd find petroleum somewhere in the dakotas they would have a you know a tough shed city built within two weeks <laughs> and they'd be a comedy show like right away yeah because some vulture would be like oh there's a new city yeah How can i money. get eight hundred dollars yeah out of them? yeah and they send me up there i drive 12 hours show up there there's a prime rib dinner in front of the stage <laughs> there's people literally like going up to get meat while you're up there that's yeah. fucking great <laughs> oh it wasn't not for me <laughs> it was that's good for them terrible. yeah that is but that's like i mean that's got to suck in the moment but i feel like it makes you good at stand up yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like if you're making those people laugh or you can you know captivate that room yeah that is is such a, a like a every, every comedian obviously in their crowd represents them and your special Totes Morale is shot in Cincinnati, and I think I think you say it fairly in, soon into it, but not not right away. And it, but when, by the time it comes up, I was already like, "That's Fort Collins." Oh, but, yeah. Like, yeah. You, you you have your whole audience is like, "That's Colorado." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that's just I find the people who look like Coloradans yeah. who come to the shows, and now the show it's crazy because like Barstool has been so good to me, Gillis has been so good to me, but I come from like you know, the alt comedy situation and they mm-hmm. read my book and there's people who like books who come and I have this confluence of also like Stanhope people there. So the mm-hmm. Venn diagram that's in that room, they would never hang out in real life. Yeah, right. Right. It's a lot of dudes with Zen tins and backwards white hats <laughs> and then like women with like, you know, uh, like homemade sweaters who are holding my book and like trying not to cry. <laughs> and I'm like, you guys would never be this close unless you were on right. a bus. Right. If you yeah. were escaping the apocalypse on the last pod, that's the only time you guys would be together. And I like that yeah. you know yeah. you can make that's all of them cool. laugh you've done a good job yeah Dude, the merch line is crazy you yeah. should see the merch line it's dudes in like snorlax like uh, beanies and then there's just like a guy and like uh you know i get a lot of like um like just very young men who uh are there to have a bunch of beers but then at the end they're like you're pretty fucking smart, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like I tricked them. You use a lot of big words, yeah. man. What's versimilitude mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fun, you know. No, the, the your that's the vocab does stand out too, though. It makes a difference. It feels yeah, like you don't want it to sound pretentious up there. No, that, and that's a you're fine to line. Use words like the you have tools to use they the are. Words that you use, right? I think even if if I if you have a bigger vocabulary than me, whatever, I think I could still see if that's a word you use. Often or not, just right. by the way, you know. You can also, like, with your appearance, it's almost more endearing. It's like that medieval creature. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The oh, the mountain was... speaks. <laughs> he came down from the bell tower. He, <laughs> he renounced his sanctuary for this? <laughs> Esmeralda's going to be pleased. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you looked like Schultz, it'd be like, fuck this guy. Oh, for sure. Right. Well, that's the good thing, is if I was, like, if I was handsome, this wouldn't work at all. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Like, th- that tall man in the Go Bananas sweatshirt sure <laughs> yeah. can't talk. Yeah. <laughs> dude, dude, we were editing the special. I just kept looking at how yellow my teeth were the whole time. <laughs> it's like, fuck, dude. And then my, my director was like, no, nah, it works for your whole thing. You're, you know you're like a creature, right? 
I'm not breaking it to you, right? Like you're like a monster. <laughs> like, okay. It is. <laughs> We're doing that with a buddy who was like bald. He's like, I might get, I might get uh, hair transplants. And we're like, dude, you can't get hair yeah. transplants. <laughs> so your whole charm is you're you got to be ugly. <laughs> be the ugly dude. Yeah, you're a dripping pig. <laughs> what are you doing? How are we going to do shots off your head? <laughs> I had a buddy who's like 400 pounds. He's yeah. like, yeah, I got to lose some weight. You know, you don't see a lot of old fat people. Like, yeah, but you're so funny, dude. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whose gun are we going to draw the target on? <laughs> yeah. You don't see a lot of old fat people. Yeah. When yeah. he said that, no, like, no. <laughs> I, like, I take back to other things. Maybe you should lose weight. I'd like you around, but yeah. boy, am I going to miss that that, uh-huh. that extra jiggle when you come in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, for sure, dude. Well, that's why, you know, you're the chubby behemoth, right? That's right, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it works well. Dude, yeah. speaking of that, did you see, kind of went viral-ish the other day, um, Charles Barkley's uh, nicknames? The round mound of rebound. Yeah. No, yes, I, yeah. that one, of course. Mm-hmm. But he had so many, and they were all just Backhanded. fat shaming. Yeah. Like it was. For what? Well, people don't realize that Charles Barkley was like 6'4. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's yeah, very yeah. Four power forward. He's built like who me. Who somehow would pull up like 30 rebounds a game because uh-huh. he was just fucking, you know. His head shaped like a Tokyo dog. Dome, <laughs> you know? <laughs> the, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it. You know, when you think greatest power forwards of all time. Everybody's like 6'10". Oh, for know? sure. This dude was in When the I think greatest power trenches. forward all time, I think Theo Ratliff. But hey. oh, what a pull that is. Hey, man, the poor man's Rodman. Yo, that is, that's, a great, that's a great pull. Yeah. I, I, there's something about just throwing out old old sports names. Yeah. That just, you just go, oh, yeah, I remember him. Have you seen the stat that. lines for Rodman back in the day? Crazy. It'd be like zero, zero points, points 40 over two games. Exactly. <laughs> you know it. what is interesting, though? Go ahead. But dude. You'll be interested in this. Charles, so this is like like from his like basketball reference, whatever. Mm-hmm. These are his nicknames: Sir Charles, obviously. Round Mountain of Rebound, of course. The Chuckster, the Chuck Wagon, the Prince of Pizza, the, inc- <laughs> <laughs> the Incredible Bulk, the le- <laughs> yes. the Leaning Tower of Pizza, Bread Truck, <laughs> B- Boy Gorge, <laughs> Love Boat, Food World, Food World, the Crisco Kid. Wide load from Leeds. <laughs> Ton of fun. The good time blimp. <laughs> the Auburn <Wow>. Blob. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you right now, Boy Gorge is great. These are all just rejected names for my last special. <laughs> <laughs> and also, these weren't like, like that list, what, a couple of those are just a thing that a guy at like Checkers called him once. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not Updated like the Wikipedia stuck. page. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was, uh, <laughs> Brady always had one on his that I forget. Um, uh, what's his name? Brendan Jones. What was the, the from? He was a, like a DN from uh, Florida. I forget his name. Uh, he was like, oh no, it's Tom Brady's. He brought up the fact that it was on Tom Brady's. The Pharaoh. The yeah, Pharaoh. Like, no, one's no one's ever, ever called, called it. I've seen a couple of those in the NBA too. No. It's just like no, uh-uh. that happened once. <laughs> That's like Tom's like. Have you heard that people are calling me the Pharaoh? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That'd be nuts if it spread around the locker room, huh, guys? <laughs> Nobody do that. I would yeah. really not oh, like that. So bummed. <laughs> They're also calling me huge dong Tommy. <laughs> what? I don't know where they get this. <laughs> That would really piss me off if that stuck. <laughs> it, uh, in regards to Rodman, I was yeah. I was watching uh, Carmelo on his mm-hmm. new podcast, 7 yeah. p.m. in Brooklyn, with Melo and the Kid Miro. And, um, and he was talking about how he gets kind of like backhanded compliments as being the best scorer of all time. Mm-hmm. And he's like, everything else in the world, if you specialize in something and you do it really, really well, it's... It's heralded, right. and he went on to you know talk. He was like, "If you make the best pancakes in the world, he he left sports altogether." But like Dennis Rodman, it was okay that he scored zero points, yeah, but he put up like thirty five rebounds, right? And he was like, "People are like Hall of Famer, you want it on your team." And then if you're a scorer, pure scorer, for some reason that's regarded as selfish or lazy. not complete, yeah, lazy. Not a team player. And I, I think, and I think the answer to that is that when you are on that level. It leads people to think that you could do all of it, mm-hmm. where so maybe like you know there's an incompleteness to it. But he's kind of right, you know. It's like well, other yeah. if if you know if you're a point guard, you have two points and you know 17 assists, you did your job. Well, if you make the best mozzarella cheese in the world, and people are like, well, he doesn't do Parmesan, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so it's yeah. like, and also you love those guys on your team. It's like offensive linemen. Like offensive linemen, you never know their name. 
they're like, oh, I, I, they never touch a ball. Yep. But they're such an integral part to the game, but they're mm -hmm. not sexy. You right. Know? Like, scoring is sexy. Yeah. Diving and crushing a photographer <laughs> when you're down by 10 for a board, that's that's cool, <laughs> yeah. but it's not like, you're not going to fuck that but guy. That, but then, so don't you think sexy should be like... He got a lot of heat for being doing the sexiest thing. It's because girls don't know what rebounding is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean mellow. But I've known a couple who were on the rebound. <laughs> Come on, girls <laughs> rule. Got him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the I, I remember when I played. I played like one year of pee wee football, mm -hmm. and I was bigger, and they put me on the offensive line. Of course. And I remember our our coach. I I was probably like in sixth grade, and he was like, "We're right here, boys." If you want girls, you're in the wrong place. Uh -huh. Like he's like, you are gonna be in the gutter. You're gonna be grinding. You're yeah. gonna be in the mud. Almost what you're saying, like no one's gonna know your name. This is not the sexy job. And I remember, like in sixth grade, sitting there being like, dude, I don't want to do this. This is not the yeah. way to pitch. No, right, like, yeah. like say <laughs> we get to hit other people or like 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 like, like lead with the sugar. Right. Like, yeah. Like, like, say is... you're tough at least. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're, you tell you're me, never gonna tell know me, a human uh... vagina. <laughs> you're never gonna see a boob. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna die alone. But hey, <laughs> and the boys worry, are gonna be gonna grateful. Block this guy for a, a four yard game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, if you want any glory, this is not the spot for you. Yeah. Go over there. And I went over there. I was like, can I do like tight end? Right. <laughs> I'm 11. Right. Read the yeah. room, coach. Was, like, right. He was talking to us like we weren't gonna have like a woman sitting with us on draft night. Yeah, exactly. like, dude, none of this. <laughs> none of us are. Uh -huh. None of this matters. Yeah. <laughs> no one's gonna remember you when you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> it's the job you want, kid. This is for men. <laughs> I I don't have a pube, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I never understood the like being decided to be a catcher, decided to be a lineman. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess a lot of those times it is like assigned to you almost. Like if you want to be on the team, this is what you play. But yeah, those it, are those weird. are the roles. They're not going like, to put him in slots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. They're weirdly assigned. I remember. I'll never forget this article. It was Washington Wall Street Journal, years and years and years ago, and they did a study. Based on it was the facial symmetry of all the quarterbacks in the NFL, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna make up numbers here, but let's say the average human is 94 percent symmetrical. There, yes, yeah. every quarterback was 98 or higher. Wow! And so they were basically the study found that the attractive kids are right. put into the quarterback position. You know, there's some coach out there like that kid's sexy. And I was like, oh, that kid's a quarterback. quarterback, sure. And it's, it is so true. Face. Where it's like, oh, we, weirdly, the hot kids are put in the good position. Like, dude, think about all the shortstops you had mm -hmm. in your team. Shortstops were never ugly. Yeah, no. The fucking man, like, the, there are parents who are like, he's hot. Get him on the mound. Yeah. <laughs> well, because, whoa. I, at the end of the you're day, you're totally, I'm thinking about every pitcher I knew growing up, every first baseman. <laughs> They were all stuck. Because it's confidence, dude. What it's the all, fuck? It's all confidence. Alex Peters was a babe it, in second grade. When he got to no. play first base. Dude, don't get me started on Timmy Boyce, dude. Of course. <laughs> oh, the legend. God, those soft hands on Timmy B. Oh, boy. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of indicts coaches where they're right, like, this, right, this coach right. has a great eye for who's going to be hot. <laughs> yeah. it's, it, those Damn. kids, when you're like in Whoa. first grade. And and the parents go like, oh, he's a lady killer, and they laugh or whatever. And then like, but you know, you're getting a little more attention. Yeah. And it's just you're hot, you're confident. You you probably go play sports better than the like the the schlubby kid. <laughs> I don't know. This is it like, all it all comes back to that, right? I'm blowing my mind. <laughs> this is crazy because yeah, you think like, oh yeah, the quarterback gets all the girls, the point guard gets all the girls. What came first? Chicken the egg. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. The coach thinking he's hot. Like, yeah. Man, I'd kiss that boy. Yeah. Quarterback. Uh -huh. You got a bunch of kids showing up to first year football practice with like eyeliner on. <laughs> <laughs> They're wearing mesh shirts. Like, coach, put me, under, put me under center. <laughs> it all turns into Tracy Morgan in uh, the longest yard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn, dude. So this is the science we got to put money behind. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all for that. Facial symmetry and Hot children. little boys it's, it's, are yeah. good at This is why I oh, never Name this segment, by the way. Too ugly. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like tell your kids, you know, it's like, Mom, I got cut from the team. It's not that you're not athletic. You're yeah. ugly. <laughs> you're gross. You're a fine athlete. <laughs> they know it. You're I just know disgusting. It. You're the only one who doesn't know no it. No one's going to. You're Here's not going to And you're not going to up comedy. Yeah, exactly. Go. Here's there a mirror you. as well. <laughs> Check it out. Hair lip. <laughs> but the, I always, I hate throwing in this caveat on that, that study. Because, again, it was a long time ago. The number one hottest quarterback in the league based on the f facial symmetry. Let me see what I can guess. When was his current? No, but within the last 15 years. Okay. I'm obviously assuming it's somebody not – was it Ben Roethlisberger or something? 
No way. <laughs> what? I thought of the ugliest guy I could. <laughs> Whoa. It was he was number one. It was like perfectly was, symmetrical. Yeah. Not perfectly, but it was like But like so um, it's you know, he has this droopy eye and that droopy <laughs> yeah, eye. Yeah, yeah. Symmetrical doesn't necessarily like, mean it, it, it's it's tough when because the the science the argument does make sense. And then they're like the the headline is like it's only hot guys who get to play quarterback. See Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the one you couldn't point to. Yeah. That's the only one. <laughs> but he was also just, you know, he's kind of an outlier, too. He's just a freak. He's just, an outlaw. Yeah. Allegedly. I mean, well, yeah. A lot, a lot. He has that bloated red, like, booze nose. Yeah. Like, the Schlitz nose, <laughs> which I was like, I like this. I would play yeah, really hard like, for like that if guy. Not, if it wasn't for, you know. Bathroom behavior, right? He would really be like, "Oh, that is football." Uh -huh. You know, that's the guy you want. We've I'd say even including the bathroom. Yeah, maybe. whatever. It doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, right? Used a hand dryer for a woman's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we to judge? You know? Who amongst us? Who amongst us? I mean, us? Trevor Lawrence. Come on, <laughs> give me all of that. <laughs> you put him Who's in fucking a, high heels. Uh, Woo! Justin Herbert is. That Herb guy's pretty. What? He is that he's terrible adult acting. He does. Oh, does that's he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He's, got, say, he's gotten better, I think. You can read his face like Braille. Yeah. Well, you know what? I say that, that as a Broncos sucks. fan. He's a, he's a hell of a player. <laughs> like, right. that's one thing. I didn't. I don't think I realized that. Like, if you asked me, would you switch lives with him? I'd be like, I don't know. I got to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You could You could have the money, the quarterback, yeah, all that. I got... I got bad adult acne. Yeah. I think I'll pass. Oh, I think yeah. I'll just stay put. I mean, I say this as a man with divots. All right. <laughs> divots. Yeah. I yeah. get back knee. Of course uh, you do. Yeah. You're out there living, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wash your sheets. I, is that, that is the thing. Yeah. I'm a pretty regular yeah. sheet washer. How regular? But no, 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 like, no, 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 no. Like twice a week. Yes. That's but a lot. In, okay. But in between, like... As soon as you wash your sheets, you're eating food in them. Yeah. So there's like oil and uh, fucking sauce and cheese. That might be it. So like these sheets are clean <laughs> for like five minutes. <laughs> Literally, you put them on your bed and that the very same night you're eating in bed every yeah, day. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I, yeah, I, well, I eat you know, in bed every again, single Again, Parmesan. Night. He's probably rolling around the Parmesan cheese. <laughs> yeah, you're dusting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Who's I little got... gnocchi? It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I got like one of those fucking... Yeah. Back things. I, I don't know how to fix it. Do you this. have a medicated soap for your back? No. I, like, I, I, dude, I, how about I, we talk? I, I just started washing it two, week, two weeks ago. That's good. Like, without medication just yet. Can First I, uh, can I the pop problem. them for you? I, I, well, here. Let's see. You want to see it? Oh, boy. I don't what know if I was do? ready for this. I don't know how, I don't know how to see it. Um, well, you take your shirt off. I'm yeah. Take my shirt off. Dump it out. I will. Uh... Whoa. You don't have to bend over. I don't know how to see how to show back. Well, you know what it is? You're also just like Irish and like, <laughs> you know, we just have like splotches and There's no heads on them. Yeah, yeah, those are not like I those don't are know. those are bed bug bites. <laughs> <laughs> you have scabies, bro. <laughs> is this your skit? Or are you what? just rocking a jersey today? No, I said I'm a big Pat Bev guy. I said I was gonna get a jersey. Hey, fuck Love it. Love Pat Bev. That about it. Yeah, that a boy. <laughs> about that life. Uh, yeah, I think because I, I, as as a large man, sometimes you get like a real zone going on your thighs, and I started using a super a special soap, and now the zone has been eradicated. And really? I think that if you took this zone soap and moved it to your back quarters, you might have a solution. <laughs> like I'll give an animal zone your back soap. Right? Throw yeah, it on yeah. behind. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. feel your like your flanks we need to... aren't marbled the way I thought. <laughs> oh they would be. my god, <laughs> my flank. Yeah. I think I gotta wash you guys with a, uh, a broom <laughs> and, and, a, and a hose. Yeah. Get a power washer in here. It's a new segment. <laughs> clean, clean fights back. The same way, you, the same way you would scrub like an elephant. That's what I'm doing for you guys. Yeah, man. Oh, by the way, speaking of. Of elephants i saw this uh hypothetical let me see if i can get the numbers correct okay I took a screenshot of the of the guys debating it i hope i'm gonna remember it it was like um will kevin be able to locate the file <laughs> stay <laughs> tuned yeah okay 10 no a hundred thousand elephants versus one million monkeys, uh. monkeys. this guy had the monkeys I, well, I don't know who these guys are. Handshake bets are their thing. It just popped up in my algorithm. Uh, he had the elephants at minus 175. And what they had was oh, like, a, like, a, uh, like a computer simulation where they just all rush at each other. I don't know how you fucking, what, what kind of code you input to do a monkey elephant fight. Yeah. Uh, so there was like an answer to this one. It was just like kind of a war of attrition and which one had, had uh, 
leftover animals. But that's why Julian Assange think? had to go into hiding. <laughs> came up with that technology. And it was too powerful. Finally, we can simulate monkey elephant battles. I was going to say <laughs> we can just fall into the wrong hands. I, I, I the Chinese love, get this. We're doomed. I do love the thought that like we could probably be curing cancer or yeah. figure out more crypto. But some guys are out there like. First, let's do the elephant monkey fight. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Agree. <laughs> All in favor? How, what were the numbers on the monkeys versus the elephants? There's a thousand elephants. One hundred thousand elephants. One hundred thousand. One elephants. million monkeys. So that's a ten to one situation. Yeah, it's also like you don't have to make the numbers that big. No. It's just a ten to one situation. You're right. So ten monkeys on one elephant's mm, a good way to think I about it. You're right, but also, I think in a bigger pool of monkeys, the bigger the pool, you get, you get. Bigger, smaller. You get older, younger. Craftier. You get, I think yeah. monkeys, there's like a couple like hardened monkey veterans in there sure. who got like CIA training. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I think monkeys are every step. You can do a ten to one. You can do a hundred thousand to a thousand. It doesn't matter. I think every step of the way it's monkeys. And I think the bigger the number gets, the monkeys get a better chance. You think the more monkeys, more problems. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, wait. <laughs> oh, 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 wait. So even if even if there's more elephants, the el- the monkeys. I, I yeah. I think I think as you get more monkeys, the monkeys are, are the monkeys are going to be forming like centuries. But yeah. Like when they're like at a million of them, they're going to have fucking like phalanxes and shit. And yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're monkey general smoking a cigar (laughs) now uh, according to their simulation i can't find their video on this again this this appears to be their thing before you say what they had i'm taking the elephants all day really well think of just the weight discrepancy like you have 10 monkeys on one elephant Also, we got to describe the monkey you know like i'm thinking like i'm not like a chimp yeah that's fair Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Type okay. That's what. Yeah. Yeah. Planet but, of the Apes are. But you're gonna have some smarts there too. But yeah. But anyway, well, continue. I'm glad you have... referenced that because that's exactly what my, one of my arguments is gonna be. Like, yeah. Uh, have we ever even considered the fact that elephants could take over the world? No. No. We okay. We have considered many times that monkeys could. Yes. Brother? Okay. Okay. Here's another right. thing for you, though. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Now we're cooking. Yes. But, but to <laughs> man to, has to, long pondered to, to monkey to problem. counter that, you know, we're sitting here being like, monkeys are a lot like humans, right? Uh, we would like if I was like, hey, let's go fight this elephant. You'd be like, fuck no. Yeah. Ten but, humans but if you on were like, one we monkey. We have to. I'd be like, okay, let's do it. Yeah. If it's a ten to one, you think ten humans could kill an elephant? No. With bare hands. With bare no. hands. Yeah. Well, I mean, can we make our own t- weapons? You can. I but guess you I, could, but yeah. while you're trying to make a weapon, you're getting fucking stampeded by yeah. hundred thousand elves. I don't think you could come in with prepared weapons. I think you have to make weapons. Maybe you, you know, you rip a battle. tusk out. You yeah. fucking maybe find you rip your a way. tusk out. Yeah. Yeah. You free a tusk. He has another tusk, <laughs> and also, however many tons of flesh. Yeah, I no just, way. I don't think there's a method. You could like swarm a elephant, but how do you pierce its skin? How do you kill it? But this is so. This is war, right? This is war. Right. So. So I'm hiding, first of all, while we build tools. Okay. And well, well, are we humans or monkeys? Uh, humans. Okay, and, okay. And monkeys, but like... Are eat, we like, humans or monkeys? That's are the, we humans <laughs> or are we monkeys? Um, like, I'm like, guys, we got to get in the woods. We got to hide a little bit. And then we got we to gotta build spears. And I, I think once 10 of us have spears... We had a good shot. Right, okay. <laughs> but I think you're making some assumptions that I wasn't making, which is I think we're in just some kind of arena. This is just in. a... The way they did it was just, uh, uh, let's say, like a, the field in Africa and just go. They run at each other. So there's opportunities to make spears and to hide. Yeah. Interesting. Because we did kill No, wait. Maybe I didn't describe that well enough. Like, it's just like open ground. There yeah. is nothing. There's no, But there's going to be a tree, maybe. There's going to have different envir- uh, environmental hazards. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. What I mean, what they I mean, really don't do. Rock, sure, yeah, yeah. Right? That, I think you got to gouge the fucking elephant's eyes out. You got you to go in through you gotta its eyes. You got to surround them. Well, yeah. I think a lot of times when you're doing this side by like line up shit, mm-hmm. you know, you do it like they, they the old like the old way we did war, which is like psh, psh, right and standing and you got to flank them. Mm-hmm. And but again, okay, so now we have the elephants surrounded. I just how do you, you think you can gouge an elephant's eye? I think I feel like an elephant's eye get... is like the size of this fucking TV. Oh, for sure, it's easy target. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. there's a lot of there's a lot of ray tubes in it, just like this thing. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to distract the elephant and then get your smallest. Most agile competitor on the back of the elephant, mm-hmm. and then right away spear in one eye, and then hopefully that will fell the elephant enough that you can get in the other eye. And now and we have to do that ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine more times. I know, I know. <laughs> While they're just swinging their tusks mm-hmm. and trunks and big old feet. And we have brains, but they have a primal instinct. Yeah, they, they can smell things that we don't even understand. 
the nose and everything. It's elephants easy. <laughs> no I, way I, is it yeah. monkeys. Yeah. I, I, I don't think... Uh, I think the human argument, you could probably make an argument that humans could figure out how to kill one elephant. But if you have huge groups of humans, they're not good at working together in moments of chaos. No. You know yeah, what I mean? There's a panic when that we takes fucking, a, you know. There's people committing sepoku out there. Yeah. You know, there's people who are teaming with the elephants. We, yeah. yeah. You've got turn I was say, this is like, you know, every, every, every trope in a zombie movie where it's like, it's the humans. Have you ever been of. to an elephant uh, grocery store? They're pretty good over here. Yeah. <laughs> you have elephant sympathizers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would defect. I'd get on all fours and I'd be like, I, I'm with you guys. Look at me. I'm a baby. Protect me. <laughs> I'm just nude out there begging elephants. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I can't. Oh, here we go. I believe. Let me see if I can fast forward. Okay. Uh, uh, after hours of battle, the elephants won, but they lost 74,000 elephants. Okay. So it was like kind of close. 25% of those elephants still survive to tell that tale. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot. Yeah, they, that's can't, a lot. they can't hear fireworks without freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> Elephant Fourth of July is ruined for them forever. <laughs> yeah, and the scars that they carry, a lot of those elephants are going to kill themselves, you know, because the elephant VA doesn't take care of their mental health. You know, we gotta we gotta do a parade to get these elephants, you know, into college. The elephant there's GI there's Bill. There's a forest in Japan somewhere where all the elephants just kill themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh huh. We we debated. Uh, are you a uh, a Tolkien fan? Sure. Of I, I could see like in that. Yeah. Uh, could 100, 250? I think it was could two hundred and fifty Navy SEALs mm -hmm. get the ring to Mordor? Easy. You Easy. think? The hobbits did it. Well, that's what I said, but they also had like the power of a wizard and shit. Like we have drone strikes. I was thinking more like I don't think you can call in like backup drone okay. strikes, but I'm thinking you have modern warfare. Whatever you like, can carry. Yeah, okay. like, and I just think eventually, again, a numbers thing. Like those orc armies were like they just were all like. Every inch of underground earth had like an orc in it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. Even as soon if, as one of those things pops up, headshot. <laughs> yeah. But then, don't you think eventually they, they, they just swarm you? On your way through the fucking... You gotta no. reload and shit, no? I, do, I really think that it's an easy... I don't, I don't, you might lose five seals to this. Imagine battle. that. You just roll up to Mordor and you got you know 245 left. Like, yeah. Throw the fucking ring in, dude. <laughs> it's all good. Whatever, home. dude. Yeah. <laughs> dude I, the young so, Sheldon fucking season <laughs> ending. <laughs> Come on. Let's get back home. We uh, we talked about that probably two weeks ago, a week ago, and I said I was going to watch Lord of the Rings, and I did the first one. Yeah. Uh -huh. I watched um, Fellowship of the Ring. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd never seen him. And I really liked it. Very good. But it's very funny watching a movie that you definitely already know through memes. Mm. Like everything, it, it, it's crazy how much it changes the stakes. Because like, you're laughing at it. I'd be, I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, I get this feeling. It's like when your team loses on a Tuesday night. Yeah. And it's like, no, this is the state the most of important. humanity. Like, yeah. Look right here. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, no, no, I felt this before. I, I get this one. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, The Hobbit's just an excellent book, too. The Hobbit's good. Yeah. The Hobbit movie did not pan out. No, but that but book, the book. The yeah. Hobbit book was the one that, like, I feel mm -hmm. like that's what we all read and oh, knew. Oh, that right? green like, one, that green heart yes, cover. Yes. Which yeah, I read yeah, all based did. on that, or is Lord of the Rings its own trilogy? No, Lord of the Rings has three separate books. And then they made. It's pre uh No, The Hobbit was first, I think right? Hobbit's first. Hobbit yeah. was when... Because Gandalf you, is young you, in The you Hobbit. You haven't seen Bilbo Baggins yet, have you? Bilbo? Yeah. Is he in that with Yeah, Bellship? he's the first one who finds the ring, right? Yeah. Well, that's, so The Hobbit is like when he had the ring. and Yeah, mm -hmm. it, st so it starts pretty. with him. And then yeah. I think it fast like it maybe it fast okay. forwards a bit. But. Has he done that face yet where he goes... <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Why shouldn't I have it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the Hobbit, the book, Again, is when he is doing Again, a scene I knew very well. Right. And you're laughing about it because it's like... No, this Chick is like when like you take a guy's sweatshirt after you fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no, this is when the most powerful thing in the world is manipulating your brain. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very true. Yeah, the bastardization of like art because of memes. Yeah, memes and the internet, fuck. man. I never thought of that. <laughs> it's it very was, funny. It was because there's so many, at least in the first one, so many Column memes. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, and I get this shit. feeling. Uh -huh. Yeah, I've seen. I felt this million times. It's like a, a reverse meme. What's your favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time, I think, is it's that's really tough. I really like Good Time a lot. Uh, the guys who made Uncut Gems. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The movie they made Pattinson. before with Robert Pattinson. Yeah. I mm-hmm. think that's like a perfect movie. Wow, that's a modern movie to have as your favorite. I just, I, I don't have the deep, uh, maybe Place Behind the Pines. I just, I don't have like a deep vocabulary for film. I watch a movie and I'm like, that's a good movie or it's a funny movie. Sure. If I don't like it, I'm like, I'm Whatever. still not mad at the movie. Yeah, you I know? just watched Place Behind the Pines very recently. Dude, what the fuck? What Wait, a great movie. That? Well, I'd seen it, so I still wanted to hear some crazy. Is that the one? It's with... one of Pavs' favorite, so I watched it again recently. Shout but out, Pavs. I'd, I'd seen it before, mm-hmm. and you know when I saw it? Is that one with Gosling? Gosling, yeah. Yeah, okay, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I saw I went to, this is the day after the Boston Marathon yeah. morning. I convinced my friend to go to the movies. I wanted to see Place by the Pine. I think Bradley Cooper was in a big oh, moment yeah. there. Gosling, even men. That's obviously. Don't like, worry about this manhunt. We're going to fucking yeah, yeah. go to the movies. Oh, it hadn't started. Oh, so oh it, right. So it's a regular day. And I'm in there watching Place Beyond the Pines. My phone's going nuts because we're bloggers at the time and all that yeah. stuff. And I'm just ignoring it. I had a crush on the girl I was with, so I was like being present for my date. Two guys here literally got on the uh, radio scanner and were like updating people on Twitter. It became like a. Uh, it was a thing at Barcelona so that yeah. Dave and Dan were like helping try to find yeah. the fucking uh, uh, bomber. So he's just sitting in his movie, just like whatever, eating yeah. popcorn. And it was like it was because you know obviously a terrorist attack had just happened in Boston, so people weren't really congregating. In well, we don't life. know. <laughs> you know <laughs> no, it was an atrocity. <laughs> I love Boston. <laughs> and and so like we were the only people in the theater, and then we walk out, and it was just. The manhunt had started. Man, yeah. I've been on for like two or three hours. So it's like no one's allowed outside. And I was just walking through Boston like I am legend style. Like, yeah. Just me and her. Oh, it was crazy. Wow, it was really, yeah. it was a, forget if I could say, I had a really fun night. <laughs> <laughs> I got to see Boston in a way I've never seen it. And right. few people will ever see it. <laughs> it was, I Everything walked worked out for you. Yeah. It was, it was, it was uh, the one of my was, favorite <laughs> nights ever. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful memory. <laughs> yeah. It was at the Boston Common that we went to a theater in the Common. Yeah. And I walked all the way back to my South End apartment because I was like, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. And like, a delightful stroll. Yeah. <laughs> What's that thing moving in that boat over there? I don't know. Whatever. Let's just let's just kiss on the way home. Yeah. You're holding hands. Okay. Great. Yeah. But oh, the uh, another one I watched recently that I um, I I had seen once and really liked, but never went back to it. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Great movie. Yeah. Great movie. And the yeah. whole time I'm watching it, being like, God, I forgot how funny this was. Mm-hmm. I forgot how good this is. And of course, it's written by whose name's escaping me now. Uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge's uh, boyfriend uh, in Bruges, that, uh, Banshee's Adventure. Uh, that's your boy. Oh, How are you forgetting yeah, yeah. his name? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's very Irish. Obviously. He's got a great pedigree. Yeah, it's he's great. Bu- I, I, I had seen that and really liked it. And in Bruges and Banshee's are two movies I love. Fuck as well. yeah, dude. And I forget, yes, it's 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 obviously a Mick. Easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you already said you didn't mourn the be- marathon bombing. Let's, let's be easy on the Irish. <laughs> yeah, I can never go home ever again. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm the, and I'm in a Bucks jersey. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> You're ruined. Uh, Martin McDonough. Martin, Martin McDonough. McDonough. I was going to say Michael. Yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, I was like, oh, of course it's written by him. It's That, that one is... Really, really, really fucking great. Yeah, it's a great. Movie. I love this. The, I just as googling his name, it says, "Was the Banshees of Insurance based on a true story?" And it's like, <laughs> yeah, like all of them, like <laughs> all of the guys were like that. You know, what I mean? yeah. <laughs> not maybe that specifically, but yeah, we all kind of suppress our. Um, I had a similar situation to you walking the abandoned streets of Boston in New Orleans right when quarantine hit for COVID, because my wife was working down there and we got an Airbnb uh, in the quarter. And then everyone left and the streets were shut down. So we were just able to walk Bourbon Street end to end completely alone for like a week. Really? Yeah. How was it that? was it was very surreal. It was like <laughs> you described, where it's like I have this very populated place to myself. Yeah. It feels very special. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, people were dying in the streets <laughs> elsewhere, but I had the quarter to me, you know. It it, was, it is a it's it's weirdly like I, I remember we ended up posting pictures later of like Drone, not drone shots, but helicopter shots, whatever they might be, of like Boston. And I was like, I was walking, I was on the street that night. Yeah. Because yeah. it is, it's just empty. Mm-hmm. And it is. You don't realize how much, even if it's like midnight, 2 a.m., whatever, like, I mean, obviously a city like New York is always rocking, but like, there's just always some cars going by. There's yeah. always some people. There's always some noises. Mm-hmm. When there's nothing, it's like, oh, this is, this is weird. Well, remember the marathon bomber. I actually read a study that said that most marathon bombers have 98% facial symmetry. 
That's how you can tell. Because <laughs> they sexualize that guy right away. Well, just like, why They're like, look at this sweet piece Rolling of Stone, ass. baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a wild move. That, that was crazy, dude. <laughs> that was one of the craziest editorial yeah. decisions of all time. Uh-huh. It's like, dude, these guys Let's put them on the cover and In talk a different about world, he'd be a quarterback. Yeah, oh. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That was disgusting, dude. Yeah, he'd be an option quarterback. Yeah. That was <laughs> he doesn't have the height to pass deep, but man. <laughs> it was... Uh, he went. He went to a college I went to as well. Interesting. Were you guys in any clubs together? <laughs> <laughs> he was. Uh, he's at UMass Dartmouth, which is a famously hideous college. Ooh. Like it's. It's a. It's like, like the it's, ugliest in the country, bro. It is insane. The people or like the. the no, 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 no. The the, the architecture. The building. It's yeah, like a yeah. very gothic Ooh. architecture. Yeah. And like I, I went I went to a bunch of different colleges and I, I had a short stint. Trying there. to find yourself. What's that? You're trying to find yourself. Just try I went all Still over looking. the place, yeah. man. Still looking. Man, <laughs> bumping around the northeast. Yeah. I went I went the whole east coast. I went all the way down to Florida. Um didn't find myself there. Uh <laughs> but the it's a good thing. Yeah. it was it was <laughs> such a depressing call. Like it's truly like it's 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 brutalist, gothic, whatever you want to call it, uh or whatever it technically is. Um, and it was so depressing that I would get there and I wouldn't get out of my car. Wow. And I would just sit in my car for my classes yeah. and I would just drive home and tell my parents I went to class. And Ooh. I was like, I was like, I'm so depressed. I can't be, it, it's all, it's all concrete. Yeah. The whole concrete walls, concrete floors, mm. concrete ceiling. Concrete. It's kind of like Soviet architecture. Yes. Brutalism. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane that they built a college like that. Mm-hmm. And then, and, and, and that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> no one wants yes. to attend. Yeah. yeah. If you build Arkham Asylum, people are going to go there to read art history. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I saw, uh, I watched Suncoast last night. See that at all? Mm-mm. I don't even the know. Video if it's, 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 store? It's, it's on. Uh, it's on uh, Hulu. I don't know. I think it's a like kind of a like a Sundance Film Festival type of movie. Yeah, it's on Hulu. It's about um, this this single mother. It's Laura Linney who crushes She's it. She's amazing. And uh, this girl, it, it's, uh, it's Laura Linney's son is like an invalid, and her sister, his sister, uh, they put him in the same hospice place that Terry Schiavo. Mm. was in so i guess like partly a true story the the writer and director had like a an invalid brother who was there with terry shiva do you know that you get do you know terry shiva yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it was yeah. not well but i'm always aware of yeah it. yeah we it was just it was, it was like a, <laughs> 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 it was a weird uh it was like you know and the story is just about this this daughter who has to like she gave up like all of her childhood for her brother and the yeah. mother treats her like shit and the yeah. invalid brother like a jam and all that but then there's just this like undertone and Woody Harrelson is one of the protesters it's actually a pretty good movie there were parts of it that I thought were like bad but but overall I think yeah uh, pretty good sounds like a barrel of laughs (laughs) yeah no I mean I I, I was this summer uh, (laughs) I was at one point just a puddle man I can't I don't like that shit you like watching uh emotional movies yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I like feeling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, I, I don't want to. I covet that kind of shit, dude. <laughs> you, you, you'll, you'll put on a movie knowing, like, there's going to be some depressing ass shit. Well, I will do that, but I don't seek it out necessarily. But if someone smarter than me says, hey, this movie packs a wallop, you should watch it, yeah. I will watch it and hopefully experience the same emotions. But, dude, Gosling, why is he not in the conversation for coolest guy? Oh, you got he drive. Is. You got placed behind the pines. Let's make All the conversation right? if it's not happening. Wait, Ryan Gosling, where, where you're one of the coolest guys ever. Conversation. Who, who? Gosling's, Gosling is the guy. I'm, I guess I'm not. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> There's one of those things where you're like, hold like, on, everyone. Ryan, Ryan Reynolds or Ryan Gosling, he's yeah. like right there. Right, yeah. yeah. You know this no, very the popular man. opinion? I think <laughs> we should Blade talk Runner, about it more. No, Drive. Dude, has... only God forgives. Have you seen that? The follow-up to Drive? Fuck, dude. That's the movie that blew my mind most recently. And then can like, you know, all of a sudden I'll do a musical I yeah. can sing I can fucking make you laugh I can oh, dick yeah. around and he can also do that thing like he does in Place Behind the Pines where he's not acting but it looks like he's like completely real mm-hmm. yeah. where he just like let he, his reaction is just so like I don't know placid dead eyed whatever you want to call it but fuck it gets me yeah. every oh, time oh I also dude. think he was barely acting in uh, Crazy Stupid Love uh, he was just being his cool ass <laughs> self, fucking yeah. bitches on that one. Oh, you know sure, I mean? it was a documentary, stupid. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure they were like, "Here's the script." He was like, "We're good." Yeah, I, or, I, I can it. riff this. Yeah. <laughs> I watched that recently, and that that's such a funny thing, in the sense that now, if that was filmed now, yeah. The He'd be like not cool. The cool guy and the uncool guy are flipped. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, like yeah. by their style and all that yeah. stuff. Not saying yeah. that that Steve Crow looks better than him, but mm-hmm. he is. 
more in, in style. Objectively yeah. Faster yeah. If you show up to a club in like your your blazer and your <laughs> yeah. jean, and although all that, that's yeah. back now, that's back in again. But oh, like God, it was, I can't keep up. The uh, I'm not in the club. I think if you wear your Spurs. <laughs> Sweatpants, you're fucking, you're golden. Well, that's Did, how comfortable I am with y'all. So I wear the sweats. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you were talking about feeling, and uh, what's that? <laughs> you know how like when you get mad but you're also kind of pissed we call no. that sadness <laughs> the i watched past lives recently oh yeah one? yeah and i i my takeaway from it was that it is an, a great movie very uh beautifully shot and interesting and all that stuff and i i called my mom after and i was like if i was a person who felt i bet i would really like this movie <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, <laughs> fuck, dude! I'm gonna swallow my zit on that one. <laughs> fuck, it, it's truly really yeah, right. bleak, bro. <laughs> it's so bleak. Yeah, it's so bleak. Your mom's like, what, what are you doing to me? I miss no, no, you so much. No, his mom's like, yeah, <laughs> she's yeah, like, right. I'll check it out. You're right. Uh, yeah, the because I'd heard such great things. I'd heard I, it's Kirk's big movie of the year. It's, yeah, I, I heard people like it was like, leaving the theater. Everyone was weeping, and I could see myself. Like I, I watched it, and I was like, I understood it. Like that is what I'm supposed to feel. Yeah, and I, but it's not even feeling. It's just like I don't think that way. It's right. a lot of like, uh, um, Inyan, which is a, a Korean uh, Buddhist philosophy, where like many lives and, and you're kind of like an onion and all this stuff and it's just like that's not I don't really think like that so right. it's not really hitting me but it was it was great it was well great. yeah but stoicism is a totally valid way to deal with the terrors of the world yeah you know what I mean <laughs> like I don't think that you should like lean in like you don't want to make yourself cry at that movie right, right leaving right. that movie without weeping is totally fine yeah it's the people who like performatively cry being like I get it yeah. <laughs> oh my god I'm so yeah. profound and I think on this level it's saying all the things I thought and it's like <laughs> No, you're not. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah, I've you known should start you. throwing around stoicism yeah. Yeah, rather yeah. than being like, "I ah, just a bleak, barren piece of shit." Yeah. I'm stoic. Yeah. I mean, I think it's great. I try to be very stoic about most things, but I try to feel joy more than I feel sadness a lot more. What's that? I try to feel joy, lean into that like fleeting feeling of happiness, and not try and like get bogged down in things in that the, make me yeah, wallow like, in the mm. sadness. It's, yeah. it's, the, it's logical. Yeah, for it, sure. It's all. Prag uh, pragmatic. Sure. There's just yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's only like three things worth like getting really riled up about. Uh -huh. It's like you know if you're you have like a terminal disease or right. you lost a loved one or like lost all your all your your ability to earn money or whatever. You and know the, what Niners, I mean? the Niners not covering. Then, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then and then you know getting yeah. hosed by a ref on a call right, or like yeah. uh, just having like a terrible existence as a sports fan or yeah. Doc Rivers becomes your your coach in the middle of the year and fucks your team over. I don't know all <laughs> yeah. those little things here and there. I remember Louis had a joke where he was talking about how he he hated how language was used, and he he had overheard someone in the deli be like, "This sandwich is amazing." Right. Yeah. And he's like, "Why is like, that's it? not amazing? Like, what are you going to use to describe if the god if God comes down or right. whatever?" Mm -hmm. And like, I think that works with emotion too. Where mm -hmm. you're like, "Yeah, if everything is the greatest and right. everything's or everything's awful, it could go either way." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then like, what about when something truly like leave leave that door open to possibly feel that when it's deserved? Right. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like you can't give a ten point oh at the Olympics. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like, you never <laughs> yeah. know. Yeah. Hyperbole just totally negates a lot of your ability to have a legitimate conversation mm. yeah and someone's like oh my god it's awesome or he's hilarious like, i think louis had the thing about hilarious too yeah, yeah it's yeah. like hilarious means that you're like your brain melts and you're yeah. so rocked by this funny thing you're like, that lost you become, control yeah you're like a gibbering fool yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i see so many but comics also posts like everyone crushed last night everyone was hilarious it's like these words don't have meaning now i yeah. also like living though in like the reality of like to use the olympics for example it's like well, what if somebody comes along and does better it's like well i don't yeah maybe right. i don't know but that person just did a perfect routine uh -huh. yeah. so why right. are we gonna hypothetically what if the next person the next 100 people suck yeah. right and we just fuck this person over because of what might have happened why are we you punishing know? their excellence yeah yeah well, that, happens yeah. to me all the time just, yeah. my get excellence it, gets punished daily <laughs> dude i know i've seen your back tat <laughs> stop punishing my excellence <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great tag. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you you travel so much? I like to. Yeah. yeah it's, um, Tokyo I'm was so your latest, jealous, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I got to subscribe to my YouTube. I got a travel show out there now. 
Yeah. How how did you? Is that just just a, a sense of wonder that got you doing that? Like, cause you're all, you're working a lot on the yeah. road too, right? Yeah. Like I go when I do travel, I also work every night doing stand up. You know. How but does you that hit the, you off the beaten path places? You know, I feel like you'll go do shows in. Well, I did like Bratislava. You yeah, know, that, yeah. That's, like I feel that's like there, there's certainly comics yeah. you'll see London, Australia, stuff like right. that. But I feel like you're in, in even Bratislava you're, is you're pretty in a fucking crazy. Level. Yeah. How does that? How how are the crowds? What is that like? They're great, man. Yeah. And you know what? It's weird. It's like uh, they after the show, you know, you do the meet and greet, and I literally people will be like, "I saw you on Barstool," like in Prague, or it'll be like, "I saw are you on talking, Kill Tony." Are these like uh, transplants, or these are they're local? Students, students, you know? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't. It's not. I don't. Expats in Paris, you get a lot of Parisians who come who speak excellent English. Yeah. But in these other places, it's expats. Yeah. You know what I mean, it. it's Americans. Yeah. It's Australians. It's. Uh, you did know. you did you have faith? Like, would you just? Uh, would you like look at like I don't know, uh, download numbers of your podcast no. or any, like you just like I did that in Estonia. That, like, you'll, in Estonia, you'll we have... had big listenership. Okay, so I did shows there for yeah. real. Yeah, because like never the number know, one things pop up and it's like what the fuck. Yeah, like this guy Ari Matty lives in Estonia. He plugged my book on like the Joe Rogan of Australia's podcast God, or so uh, Estonia's go. podcast. So yeah, uh, I I just think like my mom took us. I remember she took us to Bar Harbor. She took us to Boston. She took us to Montreal on one trip, and I was like. 11 12 13 or whatever and i just remember like driving like to quebec city and like seeing how there was like hobbit holes like they were like all these old mounds that have like doors built into them and being like i wonder what the world's so big and you'll never be able to see it all but god i want to try and see it all yeah and also i like to eat and drink booze so you know <laughs> try you go all to those tokyo things, you know you have you, a little like you horse really, aorta you must be godzilla in tokyo oh for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean just yeah. like they chase me with fucking flame torches it's bad yeah they think i'm there to defend him against mothra <laughs> my, my brother went to tokyo uh he was studying abroad in australia and he's a bigger dude and he was so he was like a sophomore in college or something like that. Yeah. And got like like didn't even think about it, but like got drunk before went to a Halloween party before his flight. Yeah. To Japan, which he had convinced my parents to get him a flight because my uncle was gonna be over there. That's cool. And he was like, he's like, oh, he's like, I'm, so I'm right here. And like my parents later realized it's like a nine hour flight. Like he's mm. not close at all. But he showed up to the airport from the Halloween party mm -hmm. dressed as the Hulk. Oh god. So then landed in Tokyo. Dressed as the Hulk, and he was like, "This is was a mistake." Like, yeah. <laughs> he had like a jean, like a jean denim cut off jacket, and like his arms painted. Green. He's green on the plane. <laughs> how did he get through customs? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how he got. Maybe he had a, a mask on. But he had to, I know his arms were green. I don't know about that his face. Is what? Great. <laughs> well, I guess they do embrace like freaky nerd shit over yeah, there yeah, pretty yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, but that's I would never. Ever go abroad with it, green arms? It was like I, I, I knew like the, like I woke up and it was just like it's like this was a mistake. I should not have come to, to, come to Japan dressed like the Hulk. Yeah, <laughs> was that his first time in Japan? Too? Yeah, yeah. So he had to navigate the Tokyo subway system <laughs> as a as hungover Bruce Banner, nineteen year old. Yeah, what a mutant! <laughs> oh my god, the balls on this guy! <laughs> Holy shit! Did he, I can't? Uh, I <laughs> wow. <laughs> Having been there a couple times and like knowing how like how and quiet and like reverent they are and then your brother shows up just like half you wouldn't yeah. like me at all. <laughs> yeah <laughs> they probably off the plane from sydney <laughs> yeah. i guess when you get off with a bunch of australians maybe hopefully they're louder oh for that's, sure that's your only hope they're a real plague <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and they're Did pestilence you put out <laughs> that uh that the, the episode of tokyo dropped it yeah. today yeah oh today mm -hmm. okay cool yeah. uh because there's a scene i think i made the final cut where you're trying to shop for some clothes right oh, yeah and you're like you know, talking to this Japanese guy, he's like, "Do you have anything that's gonna fit me?" Yeah, like, and they just laugh. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's a oh, tough. No, 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 no. And then the only shirt that they offered was like, you know, some like, uh, it's like a what are those those shirts that would change color with your body temperature. Yeah, Remember yeah, those? yeah. It's like that material, and it's got like a twelve-year-old girl in handcuffs, <laughs> you know. And there's like some viscous fluid draining off of her like eyes and chin, oh and she was like. I was like, uh, no. Give me three. Give me three yeah. of them. Well, I don't want. I don't want everyone to think I'm a pedophile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm already yeah, a big you, fat guy in Japan, <laughs> hanging, hanging out in Harajuku. Yeah, <laughs> there's some assumptions being made. <laughs> yeah, dude. Remember when Japan had? I feel like it happened every few years for a while. I don't think it's happened since. But where they would have a big, 
like Nazi Nazism would get in fashion, uh-huh. and I mean literally in fashion, not like it would be cool. Be cool. wearing I mean, like, like swastikas were fashionable. Like couture, you mean? Like yeah. what? Like couture. couture clothes. Oh yeah, yeah, couture. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. And it was like I remember blogging it way back in the day, where it was just like storefronts, which is like the Nazi, Japanese are wearing like swastika. swastikas again. They kind of do whatever they want over Look, there. Look, man, great place to visit, but they are an ethno state. They don't really let anyone in. No. They're, I like, mean, very it's... proud to be Japanese and right. protect the Japanese way of life. I mean, they, it... that was until, like, was it the 1800s where, like, you couldn't leave Japan? I don't know. I just know now that it's, like, it's still very 99.9999 Japanese. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Which is, and it's, like, allowed. And not, yeah. not like, fra- you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, that's what, the, you know, isolationism and, and For all sure. that, you know. Yeah. As opposed to, like, right. And yeah. Instead of, like, this seems well they gave like, us pokemon <laughs> it can't be all bad you know <laughs> yeah no it's weird over there like yeah. uh, i i would, when i was went over there the first time like i told my wife like the third day i was like it's just crazy because like we leave our hotel room and everyone's japanese mm. and she was like lol and i'm like no but think look about around it. today <laughs> yeah you're gonna see more than just you know there's like not a lot of white people there's right. very few people of color in any way right i mean it's bizarre right so, yeah it is strange and like they also there's a lot of uh, ancient blood feuds between the koreans and the japanese right. for various yeah you know <laughs> some people call them war crimes <laughs> <laughs> i don't, I don't want to put a label on things it's none of my business but <laughs> yeah some nan kings got raped and uh there's some bad blood over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, before we let you go, yeah. wh- where is one place that you would recommend that would be a, a surprise? Off the beaten path? Yeah. I think uh, Bratislava is really Bratislava, cool. Really? Yeah, it's small. It's navigable. Dude, um, my, my only knowledge of Bratislava is Eurotrip. Yeah. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, mean, yeah. I didn't know it so. near Bratislava. Bratislava. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think it was going to be cool. We were there for two days, and I didn't want to leave. Really? Well, right. yeah, I mean, like, Prague, obviously, beautiful. Yeah. You know, the, the river's right there. You go to Darling's Cabaret course. while you're over there? What's that? You go to Darling's Cabaret while you're over in Prague? No, I was with my wife. Ah, she yeah. liked it. What is it? Strip club? Uh, kind of. I mean, like a strip club where you can have sex with the strippers. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, we, whorehouse. Yeah. I was Japanese. there when I was like 16. Mm-hmm. And we had a hockey tournament and like we like saw the boat. It's like, you know, strip clubs will sometimes like have like, if you bring 10 people, we'll come pick you up in a limo. Kind yeah, of yeah. Deal. And we saw that and like just every night we would have like the party bus come pick us yeah. up. Yeah. And like I had braces, run it back, and it was like it got it got. We were there long enough to like we became like regulars as like children at this strip club. Did you engage in commerce? I uh, yeah, I got so I was I think I turned I turned either fifteen or sixteen while I was there, Jesus and they it was an old I think it was an under eighteen team, but like the older kids bought me a lap dance for it, uh-huh. and the I, yeah, I got a lesbian lap dance, and the strippers took my shirt off. Whoa! And I had a. 15 16 year old body with just like the the puffy nipples uh-huh. and they were like they were like sucking my nipples but i had braces and it was like this is so uncomfortable wow <laughs> it was, it was. they are more evolved than us <laughs> so cosmopolitan Bro. quick 20 bucks they'll fuck a kid for you <laughs> yeah the thought of some chick sucking your 14 year old nipples yeah. is so goddamn vile that's pretty tough that is yeah. so despicable oh my god mm-hmm. <laughs> I used oh. to I used to tape my nipples down in high school. Oh, because you had I would, pointies too. I would literally put duct tape over tape my nipples them. so I could wear t t shirts without them showing. Yeah, hurt. Bro, I well, would do after I would... after football games if we won. There was a uh, tradition where you do the truffle shuffle. And one time I hopped up there after we we beat Jefferson forty nine zero. Took the shirt off. Forgot I was taped. <laughs> Were they and, like? And everyone was like, "All right, he's doing." What, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> yeah. And my it was like dead quiet in there. My coach came up and I was like. And he reaches up and he just ripped off the duct tape and said, Inglewood next week. <laughs> <laughs> Nib high football rules. He totally just was like, Dude. this it could have really been bad. <laughs> Bro, I yeah. I wanna I wanna create an entire television series just for that scene. Hey, yeah. Like that would be so fucking funny. <laughs> The guy, the big guy, forgot that he duct taped his tits. Yeah, so he Let's could wear. Let's go, guys! And yeah, so I could wear a fucking drop all of a sudden. Echo T-shirt to school without <laughs> yes. people seeing my nips. Yes. Yeah, dude. Dude, I used to go. Ooh, I dude, used to go heavy so with like the. Terrible. Yeah, it was bad, dude. <laughs> the thought of like. <laughs> Yeah. Like it makes noise every like morning thick. in front of the mirror. Like my junior year, I was oh. like, I'm gonna tape him down. And then people, of course, were like, "What's titties. up with like on the bus ride back?" 
so do we gonna talk about? And I was like, yeah, I heard it kills the hair on your nipples. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which is slick. Yes, I guess it'll it'll, yeah, yeah. it'll yeah. rip it the fuck off. What was I supposed to tell all these guys? Uh, no, I'm just vain about my puffiness. <laughs> no. Yeah, Sammy Loft pointed out my nipple one time, and it rocked me, and I didn't sleep that night. So, yeah, been thinking about it ever since. Uh-huh. <laughs> I I tried to do like um, what do you call it? Uh, like create marketing against puberty because I hit puberty so late. Where I was like, oh. people would be like, "Do you even have for pubes?" Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, like, yeah. "Oh, you're all fucking like, dude. No chicks don't like hair, bro. Like, yeah. the chicks I've been with, which was zero. Uh, like the chicks I've <laughs> been like with like smooth. it smooth, man. Yeah. Whoa, dude. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the coping skills of a 14 year old boy are the best in the world. <laughs> if we could just weaponize that brain yeah. instead of making monkeys and elephants fight in AI, <laughs> we'd be good. You know, blowjob parlors in, in Japan, everyone. Blowjob oh, parlors. One, yeah. more, one more Japan thing. Yeah. The uh, so I went to talk at Red Sox. Uh-huh. They were a bit uh, of the minor league team for the Red Sox. Uh, they're down in Worcester, but Paw Sox. We me and my dad used to go all the time as kids. And their last year at McCoy Stadium was a few years ago. And he's like, "Let's go for <coughs> you know just memories and let's mm-hmm. go check it out." And we went, and it was so sad and so empty and so decrepit and all that. There were 15 people in the whole stadium. And uh, Barcelona was pretty big at the time because it was probably three or four years ago. And one of, like, the guys in the booth recognized me. Yeah. And so then, like, a person comes up, and they're like, would you like to go watch with the GM and everyone else for the rest of the game? And we're like, sure. And there are a bunch of scouts in the, in the uh, GM's box, and they're telling us this story of doing scouting in Japan. And they're like, we went to this club. Where there was a the ceiling had, was glass and you could see up it and there were girls just walking around and you could see up their skirts and all that stuff and I was like cool you know whatever and then they was like and then they would shit and they would just dump in on the floor oh, and yeah. then just That's con- the Chuck Berry district of Tokyo <laughs> <laughs> I forgot <laughs> is there any Ruth, like I, I, I've never been to Japan. I, I, all I've heard is that story. I was like, no fucking way. Like, I swear to God, dude, the girls would just take dumps on the ceiling and, and just like keep it moving, just and, like, and just like like a it. horse, like shit while they walk, or just falls out of the ramp. <laughs> I think you know what? I didn't ask. Pop a squat, I was, just keep it moving. In my oh, head, I was picturing a squat, but yeah, oh. I, I was like, that's. He's like, yeah, man, Japan's wild. That is like, vile. Jesus yeah, Christ. I think in any like publicly repressed society there's gonna be dump parlors with <laughs> glass ceilings for sure i mean how do you charge you charge by the the, the, the time limit you charge by the by the uh, plop by the, by the plop. Plop. Yeah, yeah by the mouth that's your 15th plop yeah by the plop you can, you can get a lot per one then sure oh, i mean it sure. depends yeah. on the frequency yeah. and, and hey i don't want to judge plops in. one plop's fine for me <laughs> put me on the one plop plan i'm gonna come in i'm gonna film my clandestine instagram story and then i'm out the door <laughs> just need that sound that yeah. plop what, a blowjob parlor is, is is what it sounds like. You just yeah, like it's for like the businessmen on the go, mm-hmm. you know. And you go and you get blown. It's like a glory hole. No, no, it's like so a you, you, you go see. in. You get to, I think pick out the girl. They'll jerk you too, but you can't have penetrative sex. Like that's off the table there. But, but blowjobs and hand jobs are just part of like being condom a, blowjob. I don't know. When I was there with my wife first, she was like, "I'm gonna get my nails done," and if like you want to go to one of the blowjob parlors, like, go crazy. And I'm like, I'm going to be in there getting blown thinking my wife's two buildings down? No. And she's like, quit being such a pussy. And I was like, so now you're emasculating me because I'm not going to get sucked? Yeah. She's always go get giving- sucked, you pussy. It's crazy. Yeah. I remember I went to Paris or I went to Amsterdam and she was like, and by the way, if you want to hit the red light, it's transactional. It, it is what it is. Yeah. I was like, no. I'll, I'll stay at home and read. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. The, the red lady. light is, we went to Amsterdam with Bert. The red light is far more depressing than oh, yeah. you envisioned. They're in cages. Envisioned. They're literally yeah. in cages. And you know what? I, I, I think in the past, probably we're dancing and trying to entice. These girls are just sitting in the cage on right, their phone. Yeah, smoking. Yeah. They're just looking. They're just like, mm-hmm. do you want Do you want to fuck me? <laughs> yeah. Got duct tape on the. Yeah. Do you want to just come? <laughs> it's crazy. Take, it takes the hair off. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I, I, it's cool. I like to go to that red light district just because you can window shop, as they say. <laughs> yeah. You mm-hmm. know, but I don't think that I could ever engage in. And those women, though, like they rent that space. Like I think that's one of the few places where they're not sex traffic victims. Like their passports aren't hidden in a they safe somewhere. Like own it or whatever. Yeah, I think or, they're owner operators. Yeah. Yeah. It also know. is too um, confined. And and you actually touched on this in the Toad's Morale. I could never have yeah. sex in a in a bed and breakfast or anything like that. I have I have sex in a hotel room. Mm-hmm. And if like 
even, I'll have it in my apartment. And if the bed starts like yeah. cracking, I'm like, ah, ah we guys like, I, I get it in my own head. So I'm like, I need to be, if I, my perfect sex is silence somewhere. Sure. Or, like with no one even around. No one could possibly hear anything. Yeah. It's like, you don't want somebody to hear you pee? I'm fine with someone hearing me pee. Not fuck. Not even, not even that I'm loud. It's it's not my noise. It's the not my flops and it's the, it's the flops and yeah, things like that. Yeah. It's not my. I'm not really speaking. All I that heard much. somebody w- fucking in in Vegas, and it was very, it was funny. It was like flop 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 flop. Stop. Mm-hmm. And then like sixty seconds later, like a bunch of hard flops again. And I was like, I know this routine. <laughs> <laughs> this is a man of little stamina. <laughs> I know the deliver. steps of this dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying in Alphabet City in this Airbnb, and last like two nights ago, I didn't get to sleep until like 4:30 because it sounded like an adult Chinese woman was giving birth to an adult Samoan man. <laughs> it was just brutal all night long, just howling. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do the voice, but you know, <laughs> have a little fun in your minds, everyone. Yeah, it was fucked, dude. All right, man. Well, you're you're a legend. You're uh, you're one of the best best in the biz, Thanks, and I feel man. like it's it's breakout time for you. I mean, we, you were the first guy I called when we, when, when before Penn disappeared from Barstool and yep. we, uh, we thought there was going to be more of a, of a way to build a comedy stable. Sam was like the first person we called for Barstool comedy. Cause uh, well, watch, watch the new travel show. Cause there's a special thanks to, uh, to a certain Kevin Clancy and, those credits. Yeah. And, that, and that's on your channel. Yeah. Yeah. Did, Sam I, did I see that? Toads Morales on Matt and Shane, or it's, Toads Morales on Matt and Shane's secret podcast channel is, is not on yours at all. No, no. And then my YouTube now we're putting out Wide World Tokyo Riffs episode one's up there right now. Okay, so, so Toads yeah. Morales on Matt and Shane's secret mm-hmm. podcast on YouTube, um, and and the 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 travel show is on. So. Oh yeah, and listen to Chubby Behemoth, my podcast, which I'd never plug. <laughs> yeah. And then the producer's like, "What are you doing? <laughs> What's the matter with you? You're on Rogan. <laughs> you had one fucking job." <laughs> That's hilarious. I blew it, bro. <laughs> You're there for three hours, and you can't get one 10-second plug in yeah, for your podcast. Yeah, dude, I did not. It's great. Brutal. Though. They were so mad I'm at sure, me. sure, but it's also, that's that's how you know you had a good conversation, and you weren't just plugging shit left and right. Yeah, yeah. It, I wasn't using every moment of training that I had for that three and a half hours. That was in the dojo, dude. <laughs> that was the end of Only God Forgives. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, bro. We appreciate it, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. Click that button. Or I'll cut off my finger.